Welcome back everyone, Toys is here, and I am back yet again for yes, another McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse video with a look at three brand new McFarlane Collector's Edition figures. These are the more expensive ones. However, I happened into my local GameStop. They were having to buy two, get one free, and I happily obliged. First and foremost, we have the original Clock King. It's not the Batman the Animated Series Clock King. This is the old school campy one with the clock for a face. And I really like just that artwork, the old schoolness of it. It just, it comes across for a great action figure. Here's the barcode if you are actively searching in stores for old Clock King. Next up, we have Ragman, of which is a character I am familiar with. I'm glad they made a figure of him, but I definitely had to do a little bit of research on old Ragman to kind of fill in the blanks. He basically has a suit of rags and it sucks in soul. So that's pretty much the gist of Ragman. Here's the barcode for him as well. And then lastly, but not leastly, we have the Red Hood, a figure that I was definitely looking forward to. He's more Mater D than motorcycle fetish, which I appreciate. I'm going to nitpick this thing to death. Just get ready. But again, I like the old school looking figures. Here's the barcode for Red Hood. So this is going to be an absolute blast. And also keep in mind, there won't be any Platinums. I'm not really going for any of those, but I am actively looking for Dr. Time. So if anybody sees it, keep me in mind. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at three brand new McFarlane Toys Collector's Edition figures. The Red Hood, Ragman, and Clock King from McFarlane Toys. And so right before we get started, I just want to say a special shout out and a thank you to everyone who continues to watch my DC Multiverse videos. Also, just to talk about this, there's been a lot of new cool characters running around. Not a whole heck of a lot of Batman, hence the title of this video. So here's everything out of the packaging. These are $30 a piece. Keep that in mind, although... Like I said, the buy two, get one free. Oh, that's definitely a worthwhile endeavor. I will tell you that. Here's something, though. The card stand and everything aside. The card. Just screen grab this and read this and tell me this isn't the most unhinged paragraph you've ever read. If you've never known who Ragman is, this is not going to help. <laughs> he does come with some power effects. Rag soul sucking kind of the Ilio powers. I like it. I think they look cool. And as you attach them to his hands, I like the twisty power kind of comic book effects. They're not fantastic, but they get the job done, methinks. And Ragman himself. Everything aside from it's a reused body, all that. We know. Now, here's the deal. A lot of people will say, but we're we're getting a Ragman. That's so crazy. That's isn't that crazy? It's so crazy. Yeah. That's great, but in a DC Multiverse line, I expect we would get Ragman after a while. You can pull the hood back and see his head portrait, of which he has some Ragan deco on him. It's got a bendy wire in the hood, which that's a nice touch. I totally appreciate that. The one main new thing on this character is the hood and the cape, which all has bendy wires. I like the dangly bits right here. That's totally from Ragman. And I do love the cape. Again, it's a bendy wire. It also has some nice cloth goods. It's got holes in it. Be very careful when you start posing this. You don't want to rip the holes. I imagine if you hit it wrong, you do something wrong, it would increase the size of said holes. So just be careful. And yes, you can pose him. You can get him all in that raggedy kind of look, which, hey, that's very comic booky. I totally like the wired capes. Here's the caveat, $30 figure, collector's edition figure and all that, right? Well, you see all the rag patches, all the deco on the front, it doesn't go to the back, not at all. He's nude on the back. He's a nude rag man from the back, which you have to think again is a $30 collector's edition. It's supposed to be better paint, better quality, more accessories, all that. They're not getting that. So... This is just a $22 figure with a wired cape. Where is the extra paint? Where is all that? With the reuse of the legs, with these boot looking things right here, it looks like McFarlane Toys. You are customizing your own figures. It doesn't look like you're producing new figures. It looks like 
you're a customizer, and I hate to say that because even a customizer would know to put the deco on the back of the toy. <laughs> so don't do that for the $30 price point. I expect a fully detailed out, fully rendered, fully thought out action figure. That's my two cents on that. Next up, we have the Red Hood. Now, he comes with this cool, interesting scythe, sickle-looking weapon. It's all silver, so it goes very Playmates Toys Ninja Turtle right off the bat. Does he hold it well? He's only got one hand to hold a weapon. The other one is an outstretched hand, so extra hands would have been nice. Just saying. He also comes with a crossbow. That's totally fine. Again, there's no differentiation for paint. So the arrow will be the same color as everything else. There's also no trigger, although he thinks that's how they're kind of getting away with this in some ways. If there's no trigger, how does it fire? It's not a real weapon. What's up with you, Warner Brothers? God dang. He looks good holding it, though. I'll give him that. Then the actual Red Hood figure, of which we know what we're getting. We saw it crisp and clear through the translucent plastic packaging. It's exactly a reuse of a body with a new cape to it and a new head portrait, so to speak. It's a helmet, really. But if you look right here, the reuse doesn't allow it to be anything else. I wish it was a tuxedo. If you look at the artwork, which is front and center right next to him in the packaging, yes, it should be a tuxedo. Mater D. It's just a reuse. That's the kind of thing. He's even missing the pocket square. It's a collector's edition. It's important to us collectors. With the red hood helmet though, it's very squishy, but it is exactly that. It's a helmet, just FYI. I also like how there's a little bit of a differentiation. It's not just a symmetrical helmet. It has a little bit of a dip towards the chin. That's a nice touch, I totally dig that. And he's got a really cool red cape with a bendy wire. Mine is Ragman, or more that taffeta Batman 66 styling, but I like that you can get him in all kinds of crazy poses for the red hood. Sure, you can dip him into a vat of acid if you so choose. There's nothing crazy in terms of the articulation, but he's just fine. That's a cool looking figure, and like I said, it is a helmet. There is a peg to obviously put the ball joint in there, but the cape is also removable, so you have a black suited body. If you can swap Joker head portraits, I imagine that you could have a good time with this, just FYI. Now, we have the Clock King, and he comes with two weapon accessories, of which they are the large and small hands of a clock, but turned into dagger sword weapons. They're all painted gold. They have a little bit of give to them, but they're largely pretty stiff. I like these. These are nicely done, and he does hold them well. So in terms of bringing the Clock King to life, they've done a good job in bringing these accessories with him. The actual Clock King himself, when I saw that this was coming, I was like, that is very cool. And I think they've matched that really odd yellow-green tone. His clock face looks like a ring that you could pull off. You can't, but that's really nicely done. All the deco of the clocks is very interesting. His clock belt. The dude likes clocks. He likes being on time. This is a nice looking figure. He even has watches. Although, from what I've seen, the watches aren't on the original artwork. It's kind of a mix between old and new kind of stylings, unless that's just a straight reuse. The torso definitely is has those lines right there, which go up to the cape and the TikTok cowl, or whatever you want to call it. The cape, again, is going to be a bendy wire with more of a taffeta cloth. And, of course, the clock deco does not go to the back of the costume, once again. So it's all on the front. So it's definitely party in the front. No business happening in the back. And I've already said what I said with the Ragman figure. If this is going to be the more expensive, the collector's edition... I'm definitely not seeing it in terms of the deco. The weapons and accessories, that's totally fine. Some of the reuse, you got to allow that sometimes if it makes sense. This one is okay for the most part. Again, I think they got that really cool green, yellow, 
paints that he has going on. I think they did a good job there. And from afar, with the clocks and everything else, he's a cool-looking action figure translated from that old Silver Age comic book artwork. But when you forget to put a bunch of paint on the back of an action figure, you're going to be told about it. But at least from the front, sure, it's a good-looking Clock King. And I like the way that he scales with Batman and Robin. There is a Silver Age, old-school-looking Batman coming along with the Joker. So, again, I like how McFarlane Toys is delving more into these classic looks for these classic characters. And when you start to build a rogues gallery, of which... You notice how many Batmans are in this video? Not too many. That's how I can tell who's collected DC Multiverse. It's the comments to be the haha -ha funnies. I don't know who those comments are for anyways. There's a whole heck of a lot of new characters like, well, John Constantine, the question and the Spectre go really nicely with this Ragman, all the more kind of, well, depending on the era, magical type characters. So they all look good together as well. More of this. I'm liking this McFarlane toys. I'm having fun with the display. So. That is going to wrap it up for my quick look at the brand new wave of the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Collector's Edition figures. You've already heard what I've said about all the deco. Not going to beat a dead horse. It is what it is. Are they worth $30? It's up to you. But the card stand and everything else, if these are the characters you want, by all means. But know before you buy. I wanted them for my collection, so I got no excuse. But... You're here to hear my thoughts anyways, and I think that in the end, yes, they do display well, they look good, they have proper accessories, they got bendy wire capes, there's a whole heck of a lot of reuse, but it looks good on your shelf when you just set it and forget it. So, you've heard my thoughts, now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know, let's talk everything DC Multiverse, and I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most important, remember, stay tuned, we always got more DC Multiverse to check out, it's just a matter of time. Huh? And when I do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. Oh, and one more thing before I go. Uh, yeah, I almost threw away this knife in the Red Hood packaging. It wasn't until I went back and edited this video, I go, oh my God, I left that in the box. Ran outside real quick. Thankfully, the trash comes tomorrow, but was able to rescue the knife. So again, I like this accessory. I think he looks good. That's a perfect accessory for a character like the Red Hood, or if you want to give it to the Joker or Victor Zaz, something like that. For all those that thought I forgot about it, you got to watch the whole video. There's always something extra here. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.